Hey, welcome back to another Demero Studios uh, stream, game dev stream. I'm Todd, and today we are going to be going over uh, doing some gray boxing of the town we designed. Uh, on the last stream, it was uh, the town of Mossboro. Um, again, it's still a tentative name. I'm not sure if we're going to keep it or not, but we will um, go about gray boxing it. So um, before I start, uh, in with some gray boxing work, and this isn't necessarily going to be in Unity. I would like, eventually we're going to be able to go straight from um, our our layout or town layout straight into gray boxing, but for now we're actually just going to stay in Affinity Designer for doing the gray boxing. Um, primarily because, uh, you know, it'll be a little bit easier, a little bit quicker to just do quick uh, some gray boxing in uh, Affinity uh, Designer at the second. Um, because of how I want the game to play, how I want that uh, gameplay to work. Um, you know, if I go and I do it in Unity, that means i got to go set up the camera. I have to solidly determine whether or not I want to go 2D, you know, 2D or 3D, like three, like 2.5D or whatever. Um, and camera, and then i got to uh, build out the system for level transitions and all sorts of extra stuff like that that I don't really want to work with yet. I feel like I need to go into a little bit more detailed design on, e on, uh, on this map. So we get a general layout of the map, but now I want to go into a little bit more detailed design on it. Um, so uh, as we get started, we're going to go just quickly look over this map, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how I'm going to break up the map and kind of how levels kind of work within this world. Uh, my idea going forward. Again, this is all to be uh, play tested a little bit more to see if it works, if I like it or not. But um, essentially the levels themselves, the level transitions themselves will be uh, like the original, the original, original Zelda uh, from the uh, Nintendo days, the original Nintendo system, where when you move to the side of the screen, it like shifts you over to the next pane. Instead of being a, a contiguous, uh, connected world, it'll shift from side to side, north, south, east, west, shifting. Um, that will allow me to, that will allow the player, I think, to feel like, okay, this is a sort of a separate section of the world. It's still part of the world, but it's a separate section. And I want to do kind of like puzzles within each section. You know, I, I really want the puzzles to be isolated to each um, iPhone screen size, you know, um, just the size of the iPhone screen itself. Uh, so that's kind of what I want to do. Um, I'm not sure. I will. I do want to do some sort of puzzles that span more than one screen, but not necessarily immediate puzzles. Puzzles like, oh, get a key in this area to unlock a door in another area versus, oh, move these boxes in this certain area to block the scorpion so he doesn't eat you alive or whatever, you know, those, those types of things. Um, I was actually just playing uh, Beyond Good and Evil this afternoon, and there's a lot of that in Beyond Good and Evil. And, and um, a lot of... Uh, I, I noticed when I was playing it that uh, one of the ways that they really helped kind of keep a consistent, consistent pace in Beyond Good and Evil was lots of doors with switches that you had to press, which really slowed down the gameplay. Some people might find that annoying, but I found that it really helped keep the pace. Um, Beyond Good and Evil, the pace of that game wasn't supposed to be fast-paced, wasn't supposed to be big combat-oriented. It was more about a pure adventure. Um, curiosity and so there was you know slow points where you had to slow down and take pictures of things um, enemies a lot of the times you didn't even engage enemies in combat sometimes you did but oftentimes you didn't it was more sneaking around um, and I'm not necessarily trying to build a sneaking game but there is going to be a lot of that in this game I imagine uh, but a lot of the about a lot of the ways that they slowed the game down though was just to put a door there you already had the key to unlock the door you know, you could get through the door easily, but um, it was just there to slow the pace of the game down. And I thought that was very interesting uh, and, and a good way to do it. Um, I wasn't annoyed by it personally at all. I thought, I, you know, every time I did it, I was like, oh, they're slowing the pace of the game down. You know, this is, this is intentional. And, you know, there are other times where the doors would have been locked and I couldn't have gotten through unless I had got the key for it. You know, um, like one key, a triangle key would unlock all the triangle doors, and a red or a pink square would unlock all the pink square doors. Different things like that. Um, 
so yeah, so I just, I, you know, after I play games, I try to study them too, and uh, I try to look at some of the more uh, better-known adventure games, and I love Beyond Good and Evil. I think that's a great game, and I really hope they spend the time to really duplicate that core fun uh, from the first game uh, as they build out the second game. Uh, so I really hope they can pull that off. Um, so all right, we're going to go to the middle screen and do some uh, look at some of the stuff we've been doing. Uh, excuse the colors. In fact, I'll just turn it off right now. I use Flux. Works great. Um, we'll just disable until sunrise. Get some proper colors in here for you guys. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, last time we designed out this map, um, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? But it's just a high-level overview. Um, what I want to do now is um, kind of start s sectioning off this map uh, into screens. Because, like I said, I want this to be kind of like a whole screen. So, this wheelchair area looks really huge, but I'm thinking that the core wheelchair part will take up one full screen. This will just be one... Um, one uh, iPhone screen size is just whole wheelchair area. Again, none of this is necessarily to scale. It, it is sort of, but it isn't. You know, so this would be one screen size, and then maybe up here, the town historian, one screen size would be half the building, and the other half would be another screen size, and another screen size, and then another screen size. So this isn't necessarily to scale, but it gives the feel of the map. This map is designed to the feel. So I want the wheelchair to be relatively close to Grandpa's house. Whether it's this big or not, I want it to be relatively close to Grandpa's house. Um, I want there to be a woods here kind of behind Grandpa's house. I want there to be this woods all in front of this street. And then I also want the wheelchair races to be kind of connected to the street area. So it's really more about placement rather than scale and accuracy. Um, and it's about it's about proximity and place and uh, and relative placement versus uh, again scale and accuracy. So um, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna bring this back up in Affinity Designer, and then probably what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna create a layer and draw over top of it, and see if I can kind of section it off into various screens, uh, and we'll see what happens from there. Uh, and and then after I get get it sectioned off, I'll actually go in and and do iPhone size screens in Affinity Designer, and maybe do a little gray boxing with it. Um, so here's my support. Oh, uh, before that, I wanted to actually bring this first draft of our map in uh, into our document so that it's well documented. Um, so I should be able to take this. Oh, it just wants me to save the image. Yeah. I wonder if I can. I mean, it's both Dropbox. Insert from Dropbox. Oh, perfect. Tomorrow Studios. Oh, perfect. Right there. Choose. Here it is. Um, can I shrink it? I guess not. Oh. No, oh, I guess I can add more next to it. Okay, well that kind of shrank it. Uh, I don't really want it to be right next to it. There we go. That worked. Perfect. I'll take it. Um kind of just the first version of it will uh, add, add a caption here Mossboro V1 alright perfect alright that's saved um, we'll move these stuff off to the side and we'll bring uh, Affinity Designer in Layout FB. I should really name that. Um, oh, uh, I guess last time on the stream you didn't see off offline. I actually went and labeled it all. 
um, so that I could post it on our blog posts and it would make a little more sense to them. Uh, obviously, I spent a lot of time labeling it as it looks so beautiful, but um, uh, it is what it is. Uh, oops, V1. All right, we got some labels and stuff like that. All right, so let's create another layer on top. We'll do, call it sections. All right. Oh, and I figured out, I think I figured out what was wrong with my mouse in the last stream. I was having issues with any desire near being really slow, and I thought it was my CPU, and it was partially that. But um, also, uh, it was my USB port. So my, uh, my tablet here is, uh, was plugged into my monitor's USB port, which is plugged into my laptop. And I think because it wasn't, I don't know, maybe it's just the USB hub that's built into the monitor. It's really terrible. But um, it was causing it to slow down and, and have issues. I noticed that when I plugged my mouse into the monitor as well, my mouse wouldn't smoothly scroll across the screen. It was having issues with that. So what I did is I actually had a separate dedicated uh, powered USB hub, and I just plugged my um, tablet directly into that USB hub and that directly into my USB port and then my monitor USB hubs into that second up. So it's quite a huge chain of USB ports. Silly Apple has decided that only two USB ports suffice on Well, I guess nowadays they don't even have USB ports on Macs anymore. But, you know, uh, since Steve Jobs has died, um, which was unfortunate, I think Apple has started to go drastically downhill, which is sad. All right. Moving on, um, we got some sections. We'll go over here. Uh, we'll do a nice black outline. We'll kind of do so. We already know well, that's a thick outline. All right, we don't want anything in the middle. We want a. So we can keep it thick. Um, and that's perfect. That's all I want to do. Is these these thick black boxes everywhere. So the wheelchair race we know is going to be one screen. Um, another screen we're going to have is, so I want this area of Grandpa's house to be a screen, and then maybe an area up here to be a screen where they cut down the tree. I don't want it to go quite to the road, uh, you know, not necessarily including the road, but just uh, enough of it. Uh, and then this part, uh, I want to include his driveway. So that's going to be a screen. Uh, and then obviously I assume there's going to be another screen here. Um, do I want it to cover the bottom path? I think I do. Um, and then this will obviously cover the bottom path then too. And, and you say, Todd, Todd, they're not proportioned properly. You know what? they're never going to be, because this isn't proportionally accurate. This is not a proportionally accurate map. Um, it is just a layout map. Again, I care more about the relative positions of these objects in the world than I do the proportional sizes at this point. Um, when I actually go in and build each of these little squares out later on in the stream, uh, hopefully we can get to it in the stream, you'll actually see um, I'll have to completely change how this works. So... Um, yeah, pretty much. And in, and in fact, this may be completely different because of how I'm going to do the houses. I was originally thinking of, um, and actually this changed. I should go back here. Um, the houses were going to be, um, uh, houses were just wood houses with leaf roofs. And then I'm like, well, these are gophers. They live underground. Well, let's, let's actually do, your houses are actually just holes in the ground. You can actually go into the holes and, you know, you have this underground house that you can look at, which is kind of a cool idea. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking now. I really like that idea. I'm, I'm leaning towards that idea. So, in reality, what this would show is maybe like a signpost out here saying tribe elder house or something like that, and then a little hole. Uh, and then uh, you got all this space area, maybe a little fence or something around it. And then the other side would maybe be a continuation of that fence around the area. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, why would they need a fence to begin with? Who knows? Um, the fence is more for my, my purposes to keep the player in a confined area for that 
for the prequels specifically for the um, uh, the scenes that occur before the player has full control and full autonomy in the world. Uh, there's not too many of them again. There's just a few. But so there's that. Um, uh, I would like. I would like th this to be a screen. The transition areas, the transition area to be a screen. And then maybe after the transition area, we'll have maybe one more transition. Maybe. Um, I'm not sure it's necessarily accurate. That's a, a, a question mark. Um, you know, we could just draw a little question mark in it um, go back here um, oops sorry wrong one there we go oh okay please let me it's like this all right all right this is obviously the tribal meeting I might split it up into two areas actually um, because this is where oops, I was going to store like um, so later on in the game when you actually start collecting like the higher level um, leaders of each world to come I was thinking about putting them here in this tribal area so then you can kind of see well, that was kind of cool um, so then you can kind of see uh, where it is so I think I'm going to make this for right now at least um, I'm going to make it two separate sections um, rather than one. All right. Um, next, next location is Mayor's House. Um, I think Mayor's House... Uh, So what I'm thinking is, this will be a section here, and then we'll have a little sign that says to the mayor's house. And then the mayor's house itself will actually be one full screen here. Because I don't think the mayor needs a whole house. But maybe not. Maybe, maybe the mayor will have two house. Maybe the mayor um, will make him very rich and he'll have two houses, two holes. One for his house and then maybe like a guest house hole or something like that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um... Uh, we'll put two in here, uh, but again, we'll put another uh, question mark here for it because um, I have no idea if that's going to stay, if that's going to go. Oh, you know what would help is if I just lock that layer. There we go. Um, so then, let's figure out what the rectangle is the M. Okay. We'll put another one here, the transition between the rock and the stone. Um, and that'll kind of lead up into, I don't want to say a bigger market area, but maybe here. So when you pop up, we'll have one here, an area here. Uh, maybe you'll see part of the nut stand. I'm not sure. But I like this just as area here. And then you go here and we'll have, um, I think what I want to do is have the, I'll have the nut stand be kind of big. And then we're going to combine the fruit and vegetable stands. Because they're going to be both run, the fruit and vegetable stands are both run by Mrs. Orange. So um, we'll combine them. And then the park will actually be kind of a two-parter area. We'll have the initial park entrance area. And then we'll have the area over here by the water fountain. Um, and then we'll kind of make this. Right now I have it kind of connecting to this initial area. I'm, uh, I'm not sure. I might have it stick up here. I, I'm not sure about this, whether this path will come from the first area or from the second area. That'll be more when I get down into details again. Um, you know, we're just kind of spreading this out into, into sections. Bakery, this will be an area. Um, this will be an area here. So you'll see maybe a little bit of the pathing for this. So you'll know there's something more over here. Clothing will be more centered. Um, again, these are just going to be holes in the ground. So even these these squares are misrepresentative. And this will be another separate area here, separate screen. Um, and then we'll have one more separate screen here. The reason I'm separating this screen here on this 
in this spot is because I can put signposts here, like um, windmill that way and fields that way or something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, have a separate one down here. So why would I have a separate one down here? Because I think I'm going to do trails off into the woods in this direction and trails off into the woods that direction. Remember, the core gameplay of this game is to collect gophers, uh, collect your cousin gophers, and they're going to be spread out through all of these tree areas and even here in the fields. Um, so I want to make clear paths for the player to go adventure around without direction. This will be a section, again, it'll just be um, for blocking. Maybe we'll even include a little bit of the bottom of the fields, uh, the corners of the fields for that area. Um, we're, we're going to include just, oops, we're going to include, um, according to this, it looks like it's going to be huge, but uh, what are you doing, Affinity Designer? Um, okay. Oh, I think if I hit the M. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. The um, Okay, so this is going to be one here. Um, and maybe this will be the entrances to the fields. I'm not sure. Uh. Alright, this is getting a little annoying. I like you, Affinity Designer, but sometimes your little tiny bugs get annoying. Um, and then we're going to put one down here. And it might just be me not using the software properly. Um, all right, so another one. I don't know if I'm going to have a trail going over here. In fact, I think I'm not going to. I'm going to scratch that. So what we'll do is we'll do wee. All right, it's gone. And I even provided sound effects. Um, we'll have another one here. This will probably be just the whole bend, too. Um, and then we'll have another one here. And then we'll have some trails off into the woods here. Uh, and then we'll have... And actually, what I'm going to do with this is... I didn't even think about this. But um, what I'm going to do... I'll, I'll come through afterwards and do it a second time. Is put the entrances and exits on each screen, too. So... Um, that's what I will do. Uh, but I will do that later. And then we'll have a block box here. Um... So maybe grandpa's house here. Oops, wrong one. V. Maybe this will just extend all the way. For, and it technically it won't. And eh, we'll leave it like this. It's not going to overlap with that, but um, something like that looks good for now. Let's get up here a little bit. Um, so let's do let's do one up here. Um, and we'll put a little fence post here so that the player can see that there's more stuff this way. And then we'll do one here encompassing Mrs. Orange's house. And we'll do one here so that the player can get down into the fields down here. And then one encompassing Mr. Nut's house. Um, and then we'll have one up here. I'm not sure if there'll be a connection here or not. That's, that's to be determined at a later date. So let's Let's put a question mark here. Um, that was an ugly question mark. Come on, pencil tool. Oh, another ugly question mark. There we go, a little better. <laughs> All right, and then we'll go back to our box, and we're going to do the windmill. So what I want to do is, so the windmill is going to be one section. Oops, what happened now? All right, so the windmill is going to be one section here, and that's going to include the windmill. And then I'm actually going to have another section above the windmill that's going to lead off into a path into some woods up here, kind of like a secret path area. So you can go around the windmill, and it'll pop you into another area, secret path area. Um, we'll have one more here, 
just kind of the eerie, and then we'll have one around the barn. So the barn should probably be um, brought down a little bit, but one around the barn, um, and maybe another path area into here. Maybe this will have a path area down here too. All right, well, either way, we're, we kind of got it boxed out already. Um, oh, we uh, forgot boxes down here for the vegetable, for the fruit trees. So the fruit trees are going to be broken up into two sections. Two sections for that. Vegetables will be broken up into two sections. Uh, maybe I'll do three sections for the vegetables. It'll be bigger. All right, there we go. Um, let me actually take this layer and turn down the opacity on it a little bit. Um, so you can kind of see what we're looking at. I'm pretty happy with what I'm looking at so far. Um, bring this up to include the house. Yeah, I'm decently happy. Um, maybe we'll do bring these down so that you can enter a forest area down here maybe or leave them like that and then enter the forest area over here um, I'm not sure yet or enter the forest area off of this that actually might be better this could be just a three-way split and this could be the forest area entrance and this could be the tribal area so you have a little s separation here and maybe we might do something around here with the mayor's house or something who knows Something like that. All right. So we've got some stuff figured out. Now let's uh, do some path drawings. So for path drawings, we're just going to do a little rectangle. Um, yeah, that'll work. So that'll work. All right, let's just start simple. Uh, let's turn um, oops, let's turn opacity back up. Let's so see what I did. All right, so I didn't like that. Oops, let's get rid of that. Let's go back to turning the opacity back up. Um. Let's do rounded wrecks with a solid black interior. All right, let's try that. There's a connection. Um, there'll be a connection here in front of the house and a connection down here. Um, oh, you know what I forgot? Well, uh, all right. Um, there's one thing I need to do before I do paths. Um, we can leave the paths there that are already there. Um, in fact, let's... Um, Create a new layer. We'll call it connections. Um, and then we're going to create a second layer too. We'll move these under connections. And we're going to lock that. Lock that. And yeah, I know I went and locked all these. We're going to lock connections too. And then we're going to create one more new layer. It's going to go right under. Ah not in connections but under connections we're gonna call it houses because that's one thing we forgot to do was the house layers and we're gonna do again squares with black um, two point but we're not actually we're gonna do um, pink with this one uh, pink spec color um, blue red we'll do red all right we're gonna put you to really really transparent um, I 
There we go. Alrighty. So Mayor's House. Ooh, look at that. Mayor's House will uh, have one. Grandpa's House will have one. In fact, Grandpa's House will have two. We'll have your room and Grandpa's room. Um, and then we might even have a separate kitchen area, but I'm not certain. Um, fruit stand will have one. Vegetable stand. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. I, I might just stick with one for both. The nut stand will have one. The bakery will have an underground. The clothing will have an underground. The town historical center will have an underground. Wheelchair race will not have an underground. Uh, Orange's house will have an underground. Whether or not you can get into them, I haven't decided yet. That'll have an underground. Windmill will not have an underground per se, but you will be able to go inside of it. And obviously the broken down barn might have a couple um, sections in it. So we'll put a couple here. And it might actually be two layers, I don't know. Um, or, you know, broken down storehouse or something like that, yeah. All right, so we got that in. That's what I needed to get in next. All right, so that's good. We're gonna lock this layer. We're gonna go back to connections, unlock. We're going to grab sections, we're going to turn transparency way back up. Um, and then we're going back to connections, and we're going to finish the connections I was starting before. Uh, which is rounded racks. Um, all black. Alright, so... So there'll be a connection into the house, and there'll be a connection between those two rooms. Oops. Okay, good. There'll be a connection. The, that's the question, is which side should it be on? Um, maybe it'll be on this side. Uh, if we keep that. And then maybe over there. Uh, definitely connection there, connection there. Um, I don't know if I'll do angled, but connection there, connection there. Uh, connection there. And then this will just be a maybe a couple connections in here. I'm not sure. Um, this will be a connection here. There will not be a connection here. Um, you'll see maybe the fence of the wheelchair race. The wheelchair race will be entered from maybe up here. Yeah, probably somewhere up here. Oops, come on. There we go, from up there. Uh, connection here. Uh, connection here, connection here, connection here, connection here, connection here, obviously connection here, there might be and maybe another connection up there, connection here, connection here, um, connection here, Sorry, that is my wife um, texting me. Uh, she's ready for me to come. We were watching a movie, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. She'd never seen it, so. Ooh, that's just. We'll do a long one here, and then we'll just rotate it. Here we go, connection there, connection there, connection there. I mean, you know, you could say some of these are given, and they, they kind of are. Connection there. Um, let's, let's go back to V. Let's go to houses. Oops. Let's, we're going to move you over a little bit. Lock it, go back to connections, grab you. I love vectors for this reason right here. Just zoom in as far as I want. All right, 
we'll go back to connections. Oops, how does it need to be locked? Go back to connections. We'll finish creating because I wanted to create a connection here. Oops. Ugh. You know, I'm pretty certain that uh, whatever latest version of Affinity Designer they released recently it made things worse. Because uh, I never had any of these problems with Affinity Designer um, not too long ago when I was using it earlier. So I'm not sure. Maybe their stability is going down lately. Who knows? Um, oh, I can't believe I got that. Um, yeah. We'll do another one. I mean, I could just do thick lines. I didn't think about that. That's probably the better way to do it. Um, yeah, this is kind of late now, but uh, we can switch to that and just do a pencil with um, a thick line of, you know, two points. Okay. There we go. 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 Um, they'll be connected here. Yeah, this is working much better. Why didn't I think of this earlier? Um, we'll connect there. We we'll connect middle. Boom, boom. Okay, oh, I just wanted to do field connections too. Um, I was going to have this connect down to that field. I think I'm going to have this one, no, 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 uh, undo. I want this one to connect down there. This might connect to, not certain, but I'll put it there anyways, just in case. Um, I was going to have this connect down to that field. I already have that connection there. I was going to have this connect off into that field. I was going to have this connect down into that field. Um, I could have this connecting up into that field, maybe. I don't know, it depends on, or field, uh, woods, depends on how many woods areas I want to make. Right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven woods areas. I think that's probably plenty. Um, so, alright, so we kind of got that done. Um, I wanted to do a little bit more. Uh, obviously I'm running out of time. Um, oh, so me, I almost forgot. Um. I got house connections up here uh, and then obviously these will be connected here and here and here and I forgot a connection here and a connection here and a connection here and a connection oops connection here and a connection here um, let's actually that was terrible um let's Oops, let's go one more. And let's shrink this curve down to one point. Okay, perfect. Alright. Connection here, connection here, connection here, here. I'm gonna remake the connection, it's just a little thinner. Um connection there. I think I got them all. You could say why do I need to put these connections down because I probably will forget these later on. Oops. And if I don't actually have them connected visually in this manner, I'll forget. And then I'll come back and say, wait, were these two supposed to be connected? What was I thinking at that time? And I'll, you know, it'll be kind of too late at that point to go back. So there's that um cool we've got uh, kind of layouts done looks pretty good I'm, I'm pretty happy with that it's broken down I'm gonna save this uh, we'll save and we're gonna export again and so I can post this again up on the blog um,
again. Mossboro. One. V1 underscore section. And actually, I like dashes in my, in my dash guy. Sectioned. All right, we'll export to that. Uh, and then we'll go put it up on the blog post. And uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too boring, but you kind of got to see my ideas of how these things want to be partitioned out, kind of um, the areas of activity. Looks like we've got a number of areas here. Um, looks like maybe 20 different areas. Um, 30 if you include all the different um, woods areas to screw around in. Um, so hopefully this will be fairly good. Um, this is this is not like a full game. This is just one of the worlds that I'm you know hopefully going to charge maybe 99 cents for. So hopefully this is plenty of content for 99 cents. Um, but we'll see as we dive in deeper and deeper and continue to flesh out these details. Um, thanks for joining me on another uh, Demergo Studios live stream, and see you guys next time.